Hi everyone, we're gonna talk about for loops in this video. For loops are used to repeat a set of tasks, one or more tasks, uh, and times. You see that I mean specifically and times, uh, you need to repeat something, then you're gonna use a for loop. We're gonna do a couple of examples. The first one is printing message on screen and times, just like Bart Simpson right here. He is, uh, writing on the board i will not fake my way through life i don't know maybe eight times or ten times that's what we're gonna do in our example we will ask the user to answer a message and we will ask the user how many times it should be printed on the screen and then say the value into the how many times and the message actually also will be saved into a, a variable called user message Okay, and then we're gonna repeat it n times. And while we're setting up our for loop, there are things, uh, three different, uh, uh, couple of variables that you need to set up, um, or properties, not actually variables. You need to give a starting point to count the loop amount. It's gonna start from one, and the uh, loop should end at some point right if you say n times it will count or up to n uh, 10 and it will stop it will break the loop and then go out of the loop and then the order is important uh, is it gonna go like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 or is it gonna go like 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 1 so the direction or the order is important. Uh, we're gonna set it up as increasing order. And also the step is import important. When you're looping, it's gonna go like one, two, three, four, step wise. Uh, the difference between each count is gonna be one or maybe more. Uh, for example, if you wanna print out the numbers as uh, only even numbers two four six eight then your step will be two so we're gonna see examples about that let's do this example quickly first we're gonna ask the user to enter a message okay what is your message okay and then click all right and then obviously we're gonna save this message uh, into a variable user message variable computer needs to remember the message we entered and the message will be uh, a string obviously because it's a sentence or just a word doesn't matter and then we will read the message from the keyboard okay there you go user message and then now we're gonna set up our for loop to repeat printing the message task and times okay uh, but before that I forget about the how many times we should print it out okay ask the user how many times okay let me uh, copy this question right here in double quotations how many times it should be printed on the screen okay and then uh, save it into a variable called how many times all right how many times and that variable obviously is going to be an integer why because the user will say repeat uh, print it on the screen 10 times five times a hundred times five thousand times it doesn't matter it's an integer so and then say the uh, user input from the keyboard into the how many times oh, oh, how many times variable how many times and now we're gonna set up our loop Okay, here is the uh, instructions for the loop. We're gonna repeat n times. Click on the, uh, under the looping for shape here. And then as you see, there's a loop here. We're gonna deal with that soon, but I need to set up the for loop first. So I need to double click on it. And for each for loop, uh, the machine, the computer counts the loops, right? And it needs to know when to break the loop. It cannot be in the loop forever. So uh, it uses a variable for that to keep count of the number of loops. So let's call it a loop count variable. All right, and the starting value will be one. 
it's gonna from the first line all the way up to how many times if the user says five times it's gonna be one to five it's gonna uh, user says ten times one to ten and the direction will be increasing because it's gonna go up like one two three four five etc and the step will be one okay and when you click OK the next thing you need to do before you uh, deal with the task to repeat just add this loop count as a declaration because the for loop requires that it uses it and to be able to use it we need to declare it and it's gonna be an integer by default <coughs> every for loop uses a variable in integer form so just keep in that mind whatever the variable you're using in your uh, loop uh, for loop as a loop counter you're gonna just declare it beforehand now we're gonna print out the message on the screen saying that uh, what is the message user message right about you know what I would like to do I would like to uh, add the uh, counter value as well to see if it is really counting right I mean if it is really giving me the amount of lines that I want okay so I'm just gonna add that and I would, would like to put a space so I'm just adding this here and you're, you're gonna see it like here right here saying that loop counts and this uh, column and then the actual user message whatever it is now once it, it counts uh, the loop number and let's say the user says 10 times when it becomes 10 the loop will be broken and then it, the application will end just to make sure that the application ends with the uh, in the correct way thanks for using my application that kind of message would be just fine okay so let's see uh, well how we done overall we first ask for the message and then save it into the user message and then we ask for how many times it should be printed and then saved it in the how many times variable and then we created our loop count this is a must every time you create a for loop use a for loop you need to have this uh, variable declaration right before the for loop okay don't forget about that it's very important and then we set it up our loop uh, for loop with the starting value one and then up to how many times and then we use the direction increasing and our step is one we're gonna change these uh, properties uh, later on while we're using it in another example okay and then run it and see if it is gonna work what is your message okay let me bring it up in a little okay what's the message let's say I'm gonna say just hello Mars this is my favorite message and then how many times should be printed on the screen I want to print it five times and then enter so one hello Mars two three four and five times hello Mars is printed on the screen thanks for using my application all right so it seems like it is working I want to uh, test it with a large uh, amount of uh, loop for example hello world or Mars is my favorite again and this time I'm gonna print it out a hundred times is it possible yeah sure why not how can we sure we don't need to count the numbers uh, because we're printing the uh, loop counter here hundred times right and it could also print a thousand times hello Mars right a thousand times because uh, 1000 is still an integer and it's gonna take some time to process that problem obviously okay it can go forever anyways I'm gonna pause this and continue with the other example because uh, the rest of the examples are also important to understand for loop structure I'm gonna go ahead and then print out all the mass numbers from 1 to 100 okay this is uh, uh, let me say this one and for loop 
for loop and example one okay and then save it and i'm gonna create a new one to do that okay it's actually very kind of really straightforward right all we have to do print the numbers i don't need a user interaction in this one all i need is just one single for loop right and in that for loop as you remember for every loop i'm gonna need a loop counter so I'm gonna create this loop counter right here as an integer before I do that. And then all I had to do is it says clearly here one to one hundred. So I'm gonna set it up as loop counter is the variable to use one to one hundred. Okay. And then increasing value. I start from uh, one up to one hundred, in increasing order, and then step is one. And that's it right not really we're gonna print out the stuff on the screen we're gonna print out the value what is the value which uh, variable I use just to loop counter itself so if you run this it's gonna print out numbers from 1 to 100 very easily okay what if I want to print numbers backwards all right what should I do? In this case, I'm going to modify my loop, all right? In this case, the starting value has to be 100. The ending value should be 1, and the direction is decreasing order, okay? So it's going to count from 100 to 1 uh, with the step 1. Let's see if that is the case. So it's going down all the way one if you just scroll up you will see that it has started from 100 right 199 98 etc so this uh, example is done also and what about this one printing number 0 to 100 only even numbers okay I, I can just modify this loop uh, for loop right and in this case it's gonna start from 0 to 100 and decreasing value but the step is not one anymore the step is two okay and then say okay and then see what happens uh, it's not printing okay I uh, wait uh, I forgot that uh, increasing value uh, direction has to be increased right zero to 100 uh, because I'm modifying a previous application I made that mistake now you see that it's all numbers are zero two four zero is also an even number two four six eight and ten twelve fourteen as you see does work okay now a different example this case using two uh, character function this is a built-in function Oh, it's all it says here. Uh, Built-in function to type all letters and numbers from ASCII table. Wait a second. What is an ASCII table? All right. Have a look at that ASCII table, and then look into the images. Okay. And then uh, if you look a uh, cool one here, let me see what does it say. View the image, and then if I bring it up a little up, you see that every numbers and letters I see here and they have an, a value for example for number 0 is 48 for number 1 49 all the way I have a couple of symbols here and then it starts to uh, the value is going up okay and then I have some letters capital letters and then I have small letters and symbols too okay so what I want to do is I'm going to start from 48 to all the way down to 126, 48 to, okay, let's save it here, uh, 48 to 126, okay. So if I set up my loop in that way, it should be just okay to print out ASCII values by using the, uh, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be here. Okay, look up ASCII table, I just did. Oh, okay, actually. And then modify uh, my loop 
to count from 48 to 126 increasing order and the step is 1 so it's going to be 48 46 uh, 9 for 50 etc and also I'm not just going to print the uh, loop counter I will actually use the built built-in uh, function right to char uh, that function actually okay uh, takes an integer value and converts it into the ASCII table uh, value for example it takes a 52 it gives you a 4 it takes us 83 then it gives you a capital S it just converts the numbers into letters right it's a built-in function actually it says straight ASCII converter all right so I'm gonna do that so and it's gonna count from 48 to 126 and then it will just uh, print out the letters and symbols let's see if that is the case okay if you look up here it's gonna start uh, it started from 0 1 2 that means 48 needs to be 0 right if you look at it 48 is a 0 okay and then um, one two three four five nine and then there are letters okay i really need to know what number matches with uh, which symbol so i would like to modify my output with the loop uh, counter value and a space in the matching character okay if i do that and run it you see that here for example um, 117 is a small uh, u okay 117 is a small u so it works as it is expected okay and then i think uh yeah this last example that was the last example with the for loop okay so um, loops are used to repeat tasks for loop is special because it can repeat a task in time specific numbers starting from a number and it needs to have an AND value and the direction will change the counting way direction and also the step will change the step it is counting right that will be it and uh, I'm gonna put the codes um, I do uh, up on github account that you can find Thank you for watching.